Ladies and gentlemen, we have a major problem at the moment. And if you've been a subscriber here a while, this shouldn't come as a major shock to you. But if you're fairly new, then what I'm going to tell you today might be slightly concerning. A couple of years ago, I made a video or a series of video explaining how Germany, Europe's largest economy, would go into somewhat of a collapse in the future. I didn't give a timeline on it or say when it would happen, but I outlined the reasons why, including how 20% of Germany's output was from its manufacturing sector and how the manufacturing sector was stalling and in decline, how they were destroying their nuclear reactors for carbon net zero, even though it made no sense and no one in the public even questioned the fact that nuclear doesn't create carbon emissions and how they would then replace it with natural gas plants and how the Nord Stream pipeline would also lead to them not having enough energy, how the Russian sanctions on energy would also lead to them not having enough energy. And I summarized this would create a decline and an eventual, in the worst case, collapse of the German economy. Well, we're pretty much there now. And I'll show you in today's video why we're there and with evidence. But the other thing I mentioned, which I said was very concerning to me, was how I really hoped I was wrong on all of these things. Because Germany is the largest economy, it's a very large country in Europe, and how often in periods like this, and we've seen this several times in the past, what tends to happen with large economies like this is they become a warlike economy. And we've now had the news out in the last few days that that's exactly what is going to be happening with Germany. They're now starting to move their economy or their industrial complex over to a military industrial complex. Let's go over to the shared screen and let's look at all of the evidence behind this because it is very, very worrying indeed. We've got a lot of articles to go through, so I'm going to try and go through them fairly quickly. Things are not great in Germany. A confluence of economic stagnation, higher energy prices, and the highest corporate distress rates in Europe suggest that Germany is in for a sharp contraction. Now, this is actually one point that I didn't talk about a couple of years ago because I didn't know just how interconnected the German corporate debt was with the USA. And we'll go into that in a moment and look at the connection there. The other problem is rising interest rates over the last two years have compounded these problems particularly in the property market. On Wednesday, Morgan Stanley analysts told clients to sell senior bonds linked to Deutsche Fanbrief Bank AG due to the lender's high exposure to the US commercial real estate market. We've covered that in other videos, exactly what's going on with the US commercial real estate market, so I won't cover all that again now. Shares have slid about 15% this month, while other German financial institutions have had significant declines in a Bloomberg index of euro-dominated bank bonds. Distress is spreading to other sectors beyond real estate construction and retail. Manufacturing is starting to be affected. Again, this has already been affected. It's not starting, it's deep into it. We can see here uh, Germany tops the corporate distress rankings. But look at this, even though Germany is the highest 14.8%, look at Ireland at 12.3%. Look at the UK, England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland is almost 10%. Spain, 11.5%. This is serious. Moving over to oilprice.com. Germany to replace nuclear with natural gas plants for $16 billion. Last April, Germany shut down its three last nuclear power stations, marking the end of the country's atomic age. Berlin has unveiled plans to spend 16 billion euros on 10 gigawatts of new gas-fired power plants in a major overhaul of the country's energy grid. This just doesn't make sense. Germany's economy is on shaky ground and glimmers of hope are few and far between. Industrial production declined by 1.6% in December on a monthly basis 
and was down 1.5% in 2023 overall compared to the previous year. Exports, which are a major cornerstone of the German economy, fell by 4.6% in December and 1.4% or 1.5 trillion euros across the year. I mean, this is staggering. 1.5 trillion euros. Over to Bloomberg then. Germany's days as an industrial superpower are coming to an end. As political paralysis grips Berlin, the energy crisis was the final blow for a growing number of manufacturers. The final blow for some heavy manufacturers was the end of huge volumes of cheap Russian natural gas. This is exactly what we talked about a couple of years ago. I forecast this for you. We are no longer competitive. Finance Minister Christian Lindner said at a Bloomberg event earlier this month. We are getting poorer because we have no growth. We are falling behind. The speed of structural change is dizzying. Frustration is widespread, although hundreds of thousands of people have hit the streets in recent weeks to protest against far-right extremism. Yeah, maybe. I think we've seen hundreds of thousands protesting against government policy more than far-right extremism, um, but okay. The anti-immigration alternative for Deutschland, or AFD, is ahead of all three ruling parties in the polls, trailing only the conservative bloc. Schultz Social Democrat-led alliance has support from 34% of voters, according to a Spiegel analysis of recent surveys. Again, take all of that with a pinch of salt to that paragraph. What we are seeing is the AFD party rising as Germany or Germans start to see the frustration. Now, what does this remind you of? Because it reminds me of what happened prior to World War II. Now, I'm not giving this connection here or saying that we're going to have another rise of another Hitler. What I'm saying is that we are seeing similar patterns to what occurred before. And this led to a lot of very, very serious events, which we do not want to repeat. But yet we keep seeing all of this media, all this propaganda telling us that we have to go to war. We have to attack Russia. NATO has to prepare. We have to ramp up all the military. And here's the thing that I find bizarre about all of this. And I think most critically thinking people can now see it. We saw a lot of people's viewpoints change as well over the Tucker Carlson and and Putin interview. But what I'm seeing is that the West is saying we need to put all of these weapon systems and all the military near to the border of Russia just in case Russia decides to come over and attack. But yet you look at it from the other side and Carlson asked Putin, why did you enter Ukraine? And Putin gave his response. I talked about that. Um, I can recap over a couple of points if that's easier for you. Putin basically said he entered Ukraine. It wasn't a new conflict. It was a continuation of Crimea, etc. And he basically said he warned NATO five times that if they continued to expand and put weapons and missiles near to Russia, he would have to go into Ukraine. Now, whatever your view is on this and what he said is up to you. Feel free to leave a, a comment. I don't censor comments on this channel. Feel free to um, you know, voice your thoughts on that. But my point with all of this is that you're having the West saying one thing, you have Russia saying the other thing. The West says we have to do this to stop Russian aggression, but yet you look at it from a logical point of view and you ask, well, surely these events are causing Russian aggression. Now, again, that's my view. You may see it differently. Feel free to you know, tell me that in the comments if you do disagree with me on it, but that is what I'm seeing from a logical perspective. I was thinking about an example of perhaps a neighbor of mine decided to set up a rifle and he decided to point it at my front door. And I said to him, hey, can you not do that? And he says, well, you look quite aggressive to me and you've done a lot of things in the past, Neil. You shoot on your property. You do all sorts of crazy things. Maybe I need to put this rifle here pointing at your front door just in case you decide one day you're going to do something to me. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go there in the middle of the night and I'm going to either remove that rifle or I'm going to destroy it. And I think that's the best example of what I'm seeing right now with this whole conflict between Russia, between NATO, is that I feel as though both sides' events are causing the other to accelerate 
all of these trends. Continuing on with Bloomberg then, fading industrial competitiveness threatens to plunge Germany into a downward spiral. Despite the motivation of our employees, we have arrived at a point where we can't export truck tires from Germany at competitive prices. If Germany can't export competitively in the international context, the country loses one of its biggest strengths. Germany's sluggish bureaucracy also isn't keeping pace, even when companies are prepared to invest. GEA installed solar capacity at a factory in the western German town of Old, where it makes equipment that can separate cream from milk. Uh, here we go, cream from milk. Well, there's a key straight away. It applied for permits to feed in the power last January, two months before starting construction, and is still waiting for approval, nearly two years after initiating the project. And yes, we've talked about this as well, because this is the problem. No, none of these Western countries are keeping up with the demand. Within a decade, the working age population will be too small to keep the economy functioning as it does today. The Bundesbank concluded in a September report that a decline in manufacturing, which accounts for just under 20% of the economy, they say isn't worrying if it's gradual. Well, it is worrying. Another Bloomberg article, rising distress in Germany signals a lot more struggles ahead. About 15% of German companies are troubled. I mean, this is a staggering number. Germany's office property slum accelerates with record drop. Prices for office buildings tumbled 13% in the fourth quarter. Okay, this isn't an adjustment because remember, there's also the exposure to the U.S., commercial real estate as well. Germany's market for office buildings suffered its sharpest drop in two decades as higher financing costs and sluggish return to office trend soured investor appetite. Ladies and gents, you're going to see this everywhere. This is not just Germany. And then we have so many more of these articles. They're all coming out at the moment. And look at this. German output has trended downward since 2017 peak. I know my face is in the way a little bit here, but you can see here this, this segment it has been going down. You look at the energy, you look at what happened with the energy policy decisions, and there is a, a very strong correlation here. But this is a steep decline. When did we last see something like this? It was the 1990s here or the 2008. We're seeing this decline. I would say this is closer to the 1990s decline, but let's just see. I think it's going to be deeper than the 1990s decline. So what is all of this leading to then? Well, we're seeing a lot of media come out. Poland, France, and Germany vow to make Europe stronger as fears grow over Russia and Trump. Now you might say, Donald Trump, why on earth are the media going after Donald Trump and saying that he is you know, a big concern now? Well, I'll show you in a moment because we now have the Helsinki Times Half of Finns say Finland should prepare for war in the coming years. We've seen all of this coming out. This is where we're seeing this from uh, about Trump then. Trump encourages Russia to attack non-paying NATO allies. <laughs> okay, I think they're being a little bit alarmist with this headline here. I wouldn't say he encouraged. He just made a, you know, a kind of sensational statement, which Trump is very well known for. Reuters uh, leads with this article then. Russia preparing for military confrontation with West, says Estonia. Well, again, Estonia are highly biased, and we'll, we'll show you why in a moment. A growing number of Western officials have warned of a military threat from Russia to countries along the eastern flank of NATO, calling for Europe to get prepared by rearming. So again, this is what I, the example I gave. They are saying that we need to rearm, and we'll show you exactly what Germany is now planning to do, and well, I think, I think the word planning is wrong, are doing. The chief of the intelligence service said the assessment was based on Russian plans to double the number of forces stationed along its border with NATO members, Finland and the Balkan states of Estonia, Lithuania and Latvia. Well, again, if I were in Russia and I see all of these plans to build more weapons and put more troops on the border, of course you're going to do the same thing. Again, it's a case of who does it first. It's the chicken and the egg scenario. Germany plans to have 4,800 combat-ready troops 
in the region by 2027 in its first permanent foreign deployment since World War II. And Rosen said NATO and its allies were moving in the right direction to counter the Russian threat. And let me know in the comments below, do you think that NATO is moving in the right direction to build up its military? Or do you think they should do what Putin said in the interview where he said, stop sending weapons and the war will be over in a few weeks? Again, I I'm not going to start passing judgment on all of this. Please leave your comment below. Now, this is the whole thing around Trump then and, and what he said at the rally was around NATO countries that aren't spending the 2%. So let's just look at this then on this map. Who isn't paying them? Well, the darker blue here is who is paying the 2% and the lighter blue who isn't. Now, what do you notice about this pattern? Because for me, it's quite clear. All of these countries here, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, they are all the closest countries to Russia. So you better believe, if anything happens, that the rest of these countries are going to increase. Surprisingly, though, Canada is only contributing 1.38%. The UK is over 2%. So which countries miss the mark then? France, Montenegro, North Macedonia, Bulgaria, Croatia, Albania, the Netherlands, Norway, Denmark, Germany. Look at Germany, 1.57%. I think that's probably why they're going to this military-industrial complex because that means that everyone else will have to buy weapons from them. Czech Republic, Portugal, Italy, Canada, Slovenia, Turkey, Spain, Belgium. And then which countries are hitting the 2% then? Poland, US, in fact, look at US, 3.49%. Greece also contributing a very large amount at 3%. Uh, Estonia, Lithuania, Finland, Romania, Hungary, Latvia, UK, and Slovakia. So what are they doing then? What's Germany doing in response They've just started work on a new ammo factory to counter new threats. Again, are they really countering new threats or are they capitalizing on what they can do effectively? Because it says that there is an increased demand as countries aim to bolster su supplies to Ukraine. Hundreds of thousands of shells per year. Now, I want to make another comment on this whole situation, and that is what I've said before. I keep seeing and hearing all these commentators saying, don't worry, once you know Ukraine wins, that Russia will back down and will strengthen, everything will be okay, and you know, we don't need to worry, etc. I completely disagree with this assessment. What I'm seeing is the same patterns that I've look, I love my history, I read so much history all the time. What I'm seeing are these same patterns I've seen throughout history. We are seeing all of this rhetoric ramping up. We're seeing the military ramping up. We're seeing uh, media saying conscription is coming. We're seeing weapons factories being built. It's obvious to me and any rational, logical, clear thinking person what is coming. I've said this so many times. Why do you think I travel so much? Look, I'm traveling now. You can see I'm not at home. Uh, you can see behind me, in, sort of, although it's a little bit blurry, but you can see I'm not home right now. I've been traveling. I'm doing a lot of research for my own protection, for my own plan C, plan B, plan C, because I am very concerned. Everything logically, my brain tells me what we're going towards. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen today. I'm not saying it's going to happen in a month's time. I'm not even saying it's going to happen in a year's time. But this is coming. I feel it in my bones. I see it coming. And that is why I am preparing. I don't think that's alarmist or, oh, this guy's paranoid or crazy and everything else I see in the comments. You know, again, you leave whatever comment you like. But to me, it's like water off a duck's back. I am doing what I think is right for me. I think you should do what's right for you. All I'm doing is making these videos to prepare you for what I think is coming. And no, I don't make a fortune of these videos, which people say as well, oh, he's making all this money and blah, blah. These videos pay peanuts. And I, I'm, I'm serious when I say this. These videos pay absolute peanuts. But anyway, I digress. Let's get back. So this company here, which is quite interesting, Rhein Metal, has seen its share price more than double following the whole Russia-Ukraine situation. It provides a range of military equipment that's become essential for Ukraine's defense. 
including the cannon for the Leopard 2 and long-range howitzer. And they're saying Ukraine will receive several hundred thousand shells from us alone this year, as well as several dozen armored personnel carriers and tanks. Well, here's a question I've got for you guys at home. What do you think is going to happen when Ukraine runs out of fighting age men? I'm serious. I'm deadly serious with this question. What do you think is going to happen next? Drop it in the comments below. So look, they're making this whole big deal. Wow, we're creating new jobs. 500 new jobs is nothing. This is going to be a mechanized robotics and AI factory that's building all of these shells. There was massive protests, though, against the, the, the construction. Huge protests, especially because the German state, so taxpayer money, gave them contracts of 10 billion euros last year and expects an even greater volume this year. We can still expand our production both in Ukraine and in Germany, including for armored vehicles. Now, again, we could continue on with this, but let's just quickly jump to the last article. Germany's finally pledging to meet the 2% NATO spending target. Hmm, I wonder why they are saying this now. And here's another point, because they're talking about how Trump sparked outrage by making the suggestion that unless they pay the 2%, that the US wouldn't uh, protect them, etc. But I don't know why they're outraged by that statement. Because if you think about when Trump was in office, he publicly criticized countries that didn't meet the 2%. But when Biden came in, he sort of dropped it. He didn't make a big deal about it. So now these companies are crying wolf because Trump's saying this because they know, I mean, it's pretty obvious that there's a high chance that Trump's going to come back and they just don't want to pay the extra money towards NATO. Another thing that, that they were saying, Schultz said that they need to uh, move their manufacturing towards large scale production of defense equipment. Let me just say, shells, armored personnel carriers, cannons, um, mortars, bullets, all these things, they are not defense that is attack equipment. <laughs> it just makes me laugh when they keep saying we need to create all this stuff for defense. No, these are not defense weapons. They are attack weapons. It's so crazy, all of this. It really is. But thanks for being online. Hopefully this video wasn't too worrying for you all today. I'm really just sharing the data and the facts and then you know what's going on because I am concerned. I do worry about all of you. I want to make sure you are well protected. And that's why I share all of this stuff with you. I want to make sure that you do take precautions and are planning ahead because you don't want to be like the people who bury their head in the sand. And then before you know it, it's too late and there's nothing you can do. You're pulled into this war, you end up as cannon fodder or whatever else. So start taking precautions now. And apart from that, I'll see you on the next video. Take care. God bless.